The body's doing it, its part of staying behind the ball and rotating. We should be creating almost a natural catapult-like effect. All right, Erica, so a common issue that we see with a lot of players when it comes to driver, especially players that are sending the ball way right, is they get way too much shaft lean at the moment of impact, right? They're trying to drag this handle in, face stays open, lots of spin. How do we rectify that? Yeah, and it's, it's got a, a lot of effects, right? Because one, they're losing speed, two, the face is open, and three, they're coming in with a steeper, theoretically, angle of attack. So it's just like Sounds the right. triple whammy, right? <laughs> um, so there's so many things that are gonna improve when golfers can neutralize that shaft lean coming into impact. Mm -hmm. I think just getting the golfer to really understand that this is a problem is huge because golfers are trained when they're working with irons and if they've worked with coaches on their iron game, that they wanna come in and compress the ball and get that handle in front. And then they get a driver in their hand and they don't really understand that it's any different. And so having a different mental picture of what impact really looks like, what we're trying to do at impact is I think the first key step. So I would suggest honestly freeze framing yourself at impact and creating the angles that we want. So, okay. so let's see if we can go from setup and then forget even making a backswing. Can we fast forward our body to impact without the handle sneaking forward? So that would mean the hips are obviously moving a little forward, we have some rotation happening down below. And from here, the handle is nicely in line with the face. We're mm -hmm. not seeing it sneak ahead at all. And so just going from setup to impact a few times and toggling back between those positions kind of creates at least now an intention and a destination of where we're going to an impact. Yeah. That's kind of the first thing I would do with a golfer. Yeah, that's great. So we kind of detailed the effects of the fault, right? So the club's coming down, right. the face is going to be super open. Now driver is slightly different from irons right. for the low point uh, position, right? So the bottom of the golf swing or the very bottom of the golf arc needs to be behind the golf ball as a general rule of thumb for most yes. players if they want to get the most out of their shots, right? Yep. So what happens when we lead that handle is that this club travels too far behind for too long and the bottom of the swing is going to be too far forward, correct? Yes, we don't want the bottom of the swing to be in front of that golf ball. We need it to be behind. Um, we can also, you know, take a look at body positions that are influencing this because if there's a lunging or diving move of the body forward, upper body, that can, of course, by way of, of that motion, lead the handle into that position. So one simple cue is a prompt or a drill is just to try and keep your head and your nose back behind the golf ball, almost as if you're looking at the back of the ball. Mm -hmm. So just taking the logo of the ball and see those three stripes on that right side as you're coming into impact, making a conscious effort to keep your eyes on the back of the ball and simply try to keep your head and your nose lined up you know, laterally behind the golf ball will keep more of the mass of your upper body back and give you more time and space to release the handle. So I think just not being in front of the golf ball is also a pretty important component of doing this better. Great, so why don't you jump in here yeah. and kind of demonstrate a couple of those little moves that you were just talking about. So first of all, we see that the Recreational golfer who would be struggling with this, the handle would be leaning forward, the upper body lunging forward, the face too far open, we're in big trouble, right? Right. So the first little thing that we just discussed there was about getting these kind of matching up right. uh, in this sort of straight up and down structure like this, as long as the body's still moving in a forward fashion as it would be towards the, uh, the target there. We're not just straightening things up back here right. as such. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there is gonna be a sensation for this golfer that they are, tr that they are letting everything release sooner and there mm -hmm. may be a little bit of input of getting that club head to the ball earlier. Um, I hate the idea of manipulating, but if there's a little less tension in the wrist and the body's doing it, its part of staying behind the ball and rotating, we should be creating almost a natural catapult-like effect Very. with the combination of those mechanics and the re reducedness of tension in the hands and arms to like let the club head swing out during yeah. this phase of the swing. I mean, our setup would indicate that the ball is further forward ahead of what is gonna be the low point as long as we stay balanced and our mass stays behind that front side. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, if we're rotating that lead side of the body is working up and away, that should create that moment of the shaft swinging out mm. and not a draggy effect. So yeah. if we're dragging the club through, there's tension, the body's out of position, or our intention is wrong about what is 
happening at the bottom of the swing. Mm. And I, I find with a lot of players is simply just having an understanding of the theory and the concept behind can actually start to then shift the way that their body then moves into position. Because if a player, let's say they've only just used irons, let's say they're a beginner and then they grab a driver in their hand, the ball positions more towards the middle and they're trying to hit down in front, yep. well, they're gonna get all sorts of nasty pop-ups and the ball's gonna go over the shot. Exactly. By so simply now, from yeah. the way that you articulated, having an understanding that the bottom of the swing needs to be behind and then rising is very important. Now, one problem that I foresee with a lot of players when they do this, and I'd love your input, is like, okay, so they do this, but now all of a sudden they're hanging back. They're not really following right, through, right? right? So what would you say to the player that does this, but they film themselves and then all of a sudden they're hanging back? Yeah. I mean, I actually think that with driver, you can get away with a little bit of hang back. It's yeah. actually not, the, not a bad thing for a lot of players to do. Yeah. Now, are they leaving some energy on the table by hanging back? maybe but at some level they're actually creating shallower angles with their body which is such a huge bonus and bump for a lot of golfers to at least create the right angle of attack so you might you know hang back and lose a little bit of potential s speed mm -hmm. or um, create a more you know upward angle strike on the golf ball but that was is probably better for driver than the, <laughs> the other totally. end of the spectrum which is being steep and out in front yeah. so you know there is a happy medium there i think what we want to try and work towards best case scenario is that there is pressure shifting in the lower body but that the spine angle the spine tilt stays intact as you're coming into impact and so having some idea of of a segmentation of lower and upper is huge uh, now we're getting into a little bit different conversation but it is mm -hmm. part of it's part of this yeah, right of course, of course. i mean we yeah. have to uh, understand how we can shift and start to release the lower body while still leaving the upper body behind. And that comes back to like, if I can visually see the back of the ball, my head is back here versus out in front of that golf ball, I can be pushing through with my lower body and still leave my head back. Mm. And so. I think that's that's key what you just said there at pushing through. I think a great little feel or just a simple awareness for a lot of players is sure, hanging back slightly through the golf ball is fine, but you certainly don't want to be falling completely right. on your back foot. You're gonna hurt your back and you're gonna be generally as soon as you then go to an iron struggling right yes. so the little reference of seeing the back of the ball until you've hit it but then making sure that you can get to a position that if anything you can still you somewhat still finish tap your toe or side. something like that yeah. right yeah. great so exactly. all right so jump okay. over here i'm going to come in i'm Let's going to see. kind of line those keys up so uh, the one that i really love here and uh from a visual standpoint for the feedback for myself i see in the back of the ball I, I feel that's really powerful uh mainly for someone like myself who tends to get sometimes a little bit too down and across it if I was just reenacting that, bringing awareness to where what part of the golf ball I can see, I'm kind of looking at this outside part of the ball. Right. So if I'm now angling my body, I can kind of see like on the inside of those three lines there, I'm almost creating a visual of this golf club coming in very similar to like a hammer, right. coming in and up and then following through after. Right, right? exactly. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm not dragging the handle through. We're gonna line everything up at the moment of impact focusing on the back of the ball. And your impact position is gonna really mirror your setup position. Mm. So that's another good key for people is like, if you're set up with that intention, you're just coming right back to that same moment, just a little bit more dynamically. All right, let's yeah. put it all together. Let's see how it comes out. Oh my goodness. That was pretty pretty. That was great, <laughs> love it. Good job.